everyone, welcome back to Steins Gate. In the last episode, we tried to get Dotto to change the past, but <clears throat> he's still no match against Fadius in the Fadius Cup. And Carissa didn't want to stick around, so she left, and that's where we left off, and that's where we are now. So there wasn't anything to do after Carissa left. I tried operating the phone wave, name subject to change, a couple more times before I went to sleep, but the discharge phenomenon simply would not occur. Next morning, I'm sitting on a bench in front of the Braum Tube Workshop. Still early and it's blazing hot outside. And I have a message and I'm going to read my message. Assistant! Have you written that report yet? For your information, I wasn't joking yesterday. If you blow this off, then you have no right to call yourself a scientist. Maybe this is too much for a freshman like you to understand, but writing paper is part of being a scientist. All right, report. Let lesser men worry about such things. I have inventions to build and discoveries to make. I like that. I am not a mere scientist. I am an insane mad scientist. Wahahaha. If you're so confident in your superiority, then show me your power. I like the first one. <laughs> Wait. It's still early, but it's already blazing hot. It's as if I'm baking in the sun. Sweat is dripping off my chin. We're supposed to be experimenting today, but not a single lab mem has arrived yet. After waiting impatiently for a while, the first person I see is... Mr. Braun? On his moped? Beep beep! Oh, Kabe! Don't you have anything better to do? Good morning, Mr. Okarin. <laughs> oji -san. old man. Old man Okarin. The Tenoji pair come riding in on a moped. How many times do I have to tell you? Call me Kyoma. What he's saying is, don't call me old man Ji-san. Call me Nisan, like big brother. Um, what should I do, daddy? Okabe! What nonsense are you trying to feed my daughter? Have you not properly educated her, Mr. Braun? This child of yours refuses to call me by my true name. Please do something about it. Who cares? Don't be so picky. Nay, you don't have to listen to what this guy says, okay? Okay. She's a cute little person. The manager parks his moped and quickly enters the store. Sister Braun is about to follow him when... Ah! ah! She turns her attention towards the end of the street and instantly brightens up. Is it? Oh, it's Mayori. Uh, I follow her gaze to see Mayori walking this way. <clears throat> Good morning, Okarin! <laughs> Big sister Mayori. Ne runs up to Mayori with a happy smile. And without breaking the stride, she jumps into Mayori's chest. Good morning, Nei-chan. Good morning. They get along so well that you'd think they were sisters. Mayori has the ability to get along with anyone, so it's no surprise. Nei avoids me and Daru, but she adores Mayori and always goes for a flying hug whenever she gets the chance. Daru sometimes complains about that. What a lucky girl. I wish I could jump into Mayushi's chest like that. No, wait. Maybe it'd be better to have Nathan jump into my chest. His internal debate went on for hours. Ew. This is for you, Nathan. Enjoy. Mayori takes some candy out of her convenience store bag and gives it to Nay. Thank you. I have, I have some for Okarin too. She offers me some, which I silently accept. Why are you sitting out there? Out here? I'm waiting for all lab mems to assemble. Uh, are you slacking off? <laughs> Why, you chipmunk? Do you have to be so blunt? One of these days, I'll teach you to respect me. Uh, Nei-chan, I'm sure Okarin's thinking about important stuff. 
Oh, wow. Good job, Mayuri. Okarin, okarin. It's too early to make phone wave chance sparkle, right? Can I go nuke some yakisoba bread? Doesn't have a door. We remove the door. <laughs> we remove the door. You can't hate food in it anymore. Oh, right. That makes me sad. By the way, have you had breakfast? Yeah. No. Then let's eat together. We can eat the yakisoba bread cold and then heat up some canned ramen and hot water. Wanna join us, Nechan? I'm okay. I ate. Okay. Nay waves and heads back into the Braum Tube Workshop. Lured by the prospect of canned ramen, I go into the lab with Mayori. The stagnant air makes the room hotter than outside. It doesn't improve much even after we open the window and turn on the fan. Tarukun and Krisuchan are kinda late, huh? Indeed. Their lack of dedication is appalling. Just then, the sound of a breaking bicycle comes from downstairs. When I look out the window, I see a part-time warrior arriving. She immediately notices me, looks up and waves. Stop. Suzu-san. If it isn't Shina Mayuri, tuturu. Seems like they have hit it off. Like I said, Mayuri gets along with everyone. Okabe Rintaro. Did you talk to Teeter? Sana. Maybe. I thought I dodged the question, but part time warrior is persistent. Come on, you emailed him, didn't you? Yes, but I'm starting to doubt whether he can be trusted. What? Why? What went wrong? Why is she so flustered? Oh, so you're a Titor Otaku. I guess there's an Otaku for everything. Look, it's Chris-chan! Mayori leans out the window and waves her hand. Kurisu is walking towards the lab. That reminds me, doesn't part-time warrior have something against Kurisu? I look at Suzuha. Her expression has changed dramatically. Now she's staring at Kurisu in complete silence. She doesn't move a muscle. It's like she's trying to start a fight with her glare. Krisu's pretty stubborn too, so she meets Suzuha's glare for glare. The two of them exchange a word or two in front of the building. For a second, I'm worried that they might start throwing punches, but that doesn't happen. Me, me. Christian, <clears throat> Christian, Good morning. What did you say to the part timer downstairs? Krisu shrugs her shoulders. Nothing much. I told her if she wanted to say something, she should just say it. I don't think that's nothing. She's lucky that didn't lead to blows. What did she say? Nothing. She just groaned. I wonder what's wrong with her. She's jealous of Maki. She's popularity. Duh. Maki say she's popularity. Daru bursts into the lab. She's thinking, if only I had joined the lab instead of her, then I would be having fun with everyone right now. I'm so jealous, or something like that. I'm telling you, man, 3D is hell. If she wants my lab mem number, she can have it. What? Lab Mem Num is... You carrying is the highest credential a scientist could hope to achieve. They sell for millions on the black market. But you would give it away? It's not exactly a counterfeit passport. Also, shut up. Mayushi wants everyone to get along. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I don't really care about their little quarrel anyways. Only one thing interests me now. The mystery of the D-mail. Whoa! 
We began experimenting immediately, even though it's still morning, the electrical discharge occurs on demand. Looks like, looks favorable today. That reminds me, we haven't talked to Mr. Brom yet. Maybe we should come up with an excuse first. To be honest though, I don't care what he thinks. For we are at war, war against the organization and Saren, the dark power that rules the world from the shadows. Onzai sensei. Onzai sensei. I want to eat Ferris Tan's home cooking. If you give up, it's game over. Unfortunately, Dado's second email fails to change the past. I get the feeling Rainet matches are difficult to cheat your way out of like this. Not to mention, we're limited to 36 bytes of text. Looks like we have to give up on Dado, but he's gone to drown his sorrows on the internet. All right, so who do we experiment on? From the look on Chris's face, I don't think she's willing to change her policy. That only leaves one candidate. My Mayuri, it's time for you to change the past. Eh? Huh? Me? Are you serious? <clears throat> yes. And we need to see what we have. <clears throat> Akihabara is such a strange town. Everywhere I look, I see drawings of cute girls. Some of them even have their breasts fully exposed, which exposed, which startled me. Coming here has been a real culture shock. It's amazing how peaceful Japan is now. Unfortunately, Moe has become the symbol of Akihabara and the chaos that has rule uh chaos that rules here. Get used to it. I can imagine how that would shock some people who isn't some uh shock someone who isn't prepared. I agree, it's all because of the organization's efforts to stupefy Japan. Uh, well, let's do the moe one. Do the moe moe. Moe 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 pyo. All right. Eh, me? Are you sure? But um, what should I change? My day looks stumped as she slurps her canned ramen. Oh, I know. I'll make Luca Kun wear one of my costumes. How? By sending Luca Kun a mail. <laughs> I don't think a simple request is going to change the past. Can't you think of anything easier to change and observe? Hmm. She slurps more ramen. Let's use that canned ramen. Looks like I'm the only one with ideas. You'll send a D-mail to yourself one hour ago. Type, I want to eat canned Odin. Or Odin. Uh, or something like that. I don't think that's enough to convince her to... Oh, that might work. Eh? When I went to the vending machine today, I spent 10 minutes wondering if I should get canned Odin or Udin or canned ramen. It was really hard. So a little push might be enough to make you choose canned Udin. Alright, let's go with that. Odin. Odin. Okay, but before we change the past, I gotta finish this ramen first. Mayuri starts shoveling the ramen into her mouth. <laughs> what happens if you don't finish it? It'll go to waste. Oh, of course. <laughs> Krista clearly doesn't know what to say. Mayuri really is a ditz. I'm used to it by now, of course. I get... The phone wave, name subject to change, prepped for the D-mail. The contents of Mayuri's mail is so, is simple enough. Can Oden. Piping hot and delicious. I just hope it actually works. We wait for Mayuri to finish eating her canned ramen, then activate the phone wave, name subject to change, to send it one hour back. We input one pound. In other words, we set the microwave for only one second. I wonder if the discharge phenomenon will occur in such a short span of time. That's something else we'll learn from this experiment. Phone wave, name subject to change, activate! Okay. Aww. I haven't sent it yet. There wasn't enough time to blink. 
So one second is enough for the discharge to occur. That's what I expected, but it's good to have proof. What if you try warming it up beforehand? Warming it up? One second isn't enough, right? So we just run the microwave for about 30 seconds without sending a mail. As soon as it's done, run it again with the timer set at one second. That should cause the discharge, right? Any basis for that? Nope. Damn, Mayuri got anything else? <clears throat> um, well, we could change the flavor of rice ball I bought last night. Do you remember what kind of rice ball you ate last night? Smoke tuna. She remembers? Impressive. So let's change that to, uh, fish eggs. Maybe we should find another test subject. Something is telling me we're going to have to look outside the lab. I go for a walk to clear my head. After lunch at King Burger, I grab a coffee at the Starbucks on the first floor of Yodobashi. I left my Odi and the others at the lab. I need some time to get my thoughts in order. I recall what happened when I sent myself the Lotto 6 numbers. The moment I sent that email, I felt a strong tremor, and then the world as I knew it changed slightly. The fact that I had sent a email had become undone. I know that because it had disappeared from my sent history. However, it was in my inbox. The mail had definitely reached the past. What does this mean? The mail was received but never sent. Isn't that a time paradox? Is that the reason why everyone else lost their memories? Why did that happen? The butterfly effect? That's not an answer. Changing the past, uh, changing the past changes the world. Teeter spoke of divergence. When divergence change, are people's memories reconstructed to match the new world line? Then how come I remember the previous world line even after the past changes? My deliberations are interrupted by an incoming mail. T I don't have time for this. It's a mail, so I can just reply to it later. I concentrate on my coffee. No! We replied. No, I, I want to reply to it now. However, all these mails, no doubt about it. It's got to be Kuryu, uh, Kuryu Moika, the male demon known as Shining Finger. How could she be so sly in real life and so persistent in email? There's something wrong with that woman. I sigh and open my mail reluctantly. Can I send a D-mail too, please? None. Reply, I'm a lab mem too, right? Pretty please? Moika. What? She wants to send a D-mail. That reminds me, yesterday I made Moika a lab mem 005. That means she's qualified to participate in our experiments. Moika seems serious, so she might meet my demands. Most importantly, all of the other lab mems are completely useless when it comes to D-mails. I still haven't been able to verify whether or not I can keep my memories if someone else changes the past. But wait. I'm worried. Moika works for an editorial company, in other words, she's related to the media. What if she sends a D-mail and leaks the word of the time machine? We'd be flooded by press. Gone will be the days of lurking in the shadows. My location will be exposed to the organization. Of course, sooner or later, we're going to have to announce our findings to the world. But in that case, I'd rather choose a national newspaper or TV network to cover the events rather than some shady magazine. That way, it'll spread faster throughout Japan, nay, the world. Either way, something tells me it's better not to go public through Moika. However, Moika is a lab mem. Yesterday we told her everything about the phone wave, name subject to change, and d-mails. Moreover, we made her one of us. It was necessary to buy her silence. Realizing that, I have no reason to deny Moika her request, but I put my phone to my ear. It's me. Yeah, I have some doubts. What? 
You can tell by my voice. <laughs> you know me too well. So about whether or not I should include Shining Finger in the phone wave. Name subject change. Experiments. What? Nonsense! You want me to offer her as a sacrifice? True, I am prepared to make sacrifices in order to bring chaos to the world. But... No. There's no problem. I shouldn't have hesitated. Pathetic. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a mad scientist. Yeah. You might say her offer was a mess message. No doubt. This too is a choice of science gate. L. Sai. Kongru. It's decided. I type a reply to Moika's mail. Indeed. You, uh, indeed you are, Lab Mem005, Shining Finger. Report to the lab at once. After sending it off, I hurry back to the lab. But I have mail. I have mail. I have mail. I have mail. I thought I had mail. I thought I had mail. I thought it was just... It's a pachinga Uh, when I get... Back to the lab, Moika squatting at the bottom of the staircase. And we'll save that for next time. So, uh, what have we accomplished? Nothing. We know that Mayodi likes her food. <laughs> uh, we know that Moika wants to send an email. I wonder what it could say, and I wonder what possible change it could be. Hmm. I guess we'll find out next time. So if you're enjoying this series and you want to see more from me, then please subscribe. Please subscribe and do all that YouTube shit. And in the next episode, we're going to see if Moika can send a D-mail that'll change the past and diverge the world line. So I'll see you then.